Welcome to Mark D Maker. My name is Mark Taylor, and today we're looking at part two of making multiple figures using one pattern, and we'll be using Scully here as our study reference. So last time, we are trying to make this face less flat. <clears throat> I'd carved it fairly flat, much like, much like this guy's face. He's ended up very on the flat side. So what we're trying to do is <clears throat> bring that eye socket kind of around like so, and then the and then the face rounds. There's really no flat surface here except for maybe right in between the eyes there. So I'll continue to move around and try to round out the face. But I think before I continue with this guy, I'm gonna go ahead and start in on the brim on this. Okay, so let's get started on this guy. Um, first off, the the blade that I used to carve all of these was just a simple exacto blade. Um, this Excel is actually nicer than the exacto brand. Um, it's got a tightener down here for gripping jaws instead of uh, two. Which, which makes a big difference. There's a very positive grip on that blade. Um, I have number 11 X-Acto blade replacements. Um, they can be a little pricey, but I went on Amazon and picked up these. There's 100 blades in this. Number 11 Hobby Blades. I, I strop this anyways. Uh, and and uh, what a good deal these are. Um, something like $10, $11. 100 blades. You can't beat that. So anyways, I've done all these guys with an X-Acto. This is even better. But recently... Um, tried an OCC knife and uh, and really like it. Now the detailer, I'm still on the fence because I keep rolling the blade on it. Um, I'm probably taking too big a cut for a detailer. Um, so uh, I use this one and it's been a great knife. This is glued in with a uh, Quick and Thick by Tight Bond. And, and what I did here is I'm just coming in right where the brim would meet the head. So the hat is going to continue around like so. And I can just take off this extra wood right here. <clears throat> now, you can... Take your time and do it slowly. As you gain experience, you'll start to learn how to split wood to remove it a lot quicker. Um, for something that was this fiddly to get in place, I really don't want to take any chances. So I'm going to take it nice and easy. I try to never be in a hurry when I'm carving because that's when you make mistakes and get hurt. Okay, so I got that extra stuff off of there. Now the brim, you can see how I have it penciled in there. Now this is in grain right here, and it's a little tougher to carve. So if you're having a really hard time with it, 
and you see the blade isn't cutting it smoothly and it's um, the the wood fibers are tearing the your knife is not sharp enough that's when you take it back to the strop see as I'm cutting across the grain it's almost leaving a polished surface I have a center line I'm working towards. Okay. And now I can start taking down the sides. You gotta be careful not to make this uh, too, too thin. You wanna You want to get the very leading edge thin, but then you want it to get thick quick. This will give it strength. If you're selling your stuff, your collectors will appreciate it. If you're uh, carving them for yourself, you're going to appreciate it. Because things happen. soon we'll be moving and doing uh, more outdoor videos because the weather's starting to get nice we'll be visiting some parks like Great Falls Park it's beautiful there we'll get to be outside and carve should be really nice Okay. So areas like this gap, I'm not really worried about. We'll, we can come in with multiple things to fill this little gap. What that will mean though is our finished, our finished work is going to be a solid paint much like the, the face of this guy is a opaque solid paint um, versus a, a more stained look like this guy, uh, that guy right there. He's more uh, very thin, watery acrylic and a more of a stained look. Anytime you go in with a repair, um, It'll, it'll limit you to a, an opaque uh, uh, paint. All right, he's coming along.
All right. So we're going to go ahead and, and fill in this little gap here and here. Maybe even a little bit up in here where there's a little bit of a gap there. <clears throat> so what I have here is plastic wood. The um, When you have this, the best thing to do is, is here's the lid. And you see how the lid is on the bottom of the container, according to the label? That's on purpose. If you store it like this, it won't dry out. It'll last longer. So, you want to do that when you store it. Two, you want to get one of these little paint can keys, openers. Um, <clears throat> opening cans like this, by using a screwdriver, you're going to bend the rim and dry out your paint or dry out your plastic wood. This is an acetone base. So acetone evaporates very quickly. And so this will dry out very quickly. Um, but knowing that it's an acetone base can help you. If you want to thin this out and paint it onto something, you can. Um, if you want to slow down the drying process, you add a drop of, of uh, mineral oil and it will retard the uh, drying time. Uh, when I say a drop, I mean a drop. You don't want to put much of uh, much oil because it, it will really slow it down. <clears throat> uh, when, when you're done, you want to try to avoid all these little like dried flaky bits. You don't want them in this channel here because that'll dry it up. goes on nice and tight. Store it like that. <clears throat> so with this, this'll this'll dry. I'll let it dry and and I'll sand it lightly. A um, couple tips when you sand, take it outside. Uh, it sands easily, but it's it's very dusty. It it breaks down to a very, very fine powder and it goes airborne. So if you're indoors, you wear a mask, be somewhere where you're not gonna make a mess, uh, or just, just go outdoors uh, to sand it. Um, if you don't want to sand, take a little bit of the, the, the putty, get a, a like a glass container or something to put it on, Mix a little bit of acetone and the tiniest bit of mineral oil. Mix it around and, and you can literally uh, like paint it on. If you put it on like this, you can just take the acetone and brush it. And brush it smooth so you won't have to sand. So that's another trick. Acetone too is a very powerful solvent breathing it can cause lung damage so uh, be well ventilated on with the carving all right I took it outside and I gave it a sand you can see how that kind of just kind of blends in there sanded the underside of this just to smooth that out a little bit. We're looking pretty good. And we'll continue to carve. All right, I'll just continue to constantly turn the figure over, work on tightening up areas, uh, 
try to get the shape one rounded to the center lines. Um, thin it down a little bit. I want this particular character to be thin and here I'm looking at uh, the hand shape and the form of the hand. So I'll continue to tighten it up a little bit on both these characters and in the next video in part three we're going to focus on the face and the details and the details of the clothes that'll go really quick we'll concentrate on doing the face so please like share subscribe and i'll see you next time